Hey everybody, uh, Matt here with another video. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment and also subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Um, I've been wanting to do a video about Ishqal for quite some time and we're now pretty much like a year on since the, the outbreak that took place in that ski resort. reason why I'm doing it now is because last night the BBC they uh, released a 30 minute documentary entitled Our World, the Super Spreader Ski Resort. Hence why I've asked the question in the title, was it a super spreader ski resort? I think the title itself on the BBC was pretty clickbaity and so immediately I kind of had my back up. But then I watched it um, and actually I thought it gave a, a fairer balance of the story, fair account of the story compared to actually what has been portrayed in the media. Um, which I think has been a lot of just bashing the sport of skiing, bashing Ishgul, uh, and the idea of Apre skiing, which is totally unfair. Um, you know, uh, whereas this documentary, I think, gave accounts from people from all different sides. It gave accounts of um, the tourists, the people who unfortunately um, caught it from the event or, or sadly lost people who who died from COVID because of it. It gave accounts of the, the bar owners, the ski shop workers. It gave accounts of the um, people within the Tyrolean government. So yeah, it gave a fair, th a fair point. And I guess I just want to make three quick points, which is that one, a, a, a year ago in Europe, uh, nobody took things really that seriously. Even in February, March time, nobody knew really what, how serious the event was. Um, I knew obviously being in Japan, back then that it was pretty serious in Japan and it, sorry pretty serious in China and it was it spread over to Japan from there you know and, and some of the scenes have been pretty harrowing but I think back in Europe nobody really even thought around February or March that it was ever going to hit them and it was really that serious people just thought it was a bad case of seasonal flu um, but that said you know it wasn't just isolated to wish school when it came so I'm pretty sure Italy was the first real sort of a hot spot of Europe for COVID, um, but that gets brushed over. There's not anywhere near as much attention given to that uh, Liverpool Atletico Madrid Champions League match, um, which happened around the same time as the Ischgl outbreak. Um, you know, and people even say in the ski chat that we did the other day, the girls over in Maribel reckoned that it was going around Maribel around December time, but uh, people didn't say anything about it. Or it was never, again, people just thought it was just a bad case of flu. And if you've worked in ski resorts, you know that the flu's come through, it, whether they catch it from over in the UK, the tourists do, and they bring it over. It goes around the seas in our community. And then, you know, after January, when you've started looking after yourself better, it, it was just fine. You know, things would normally brush by, but obviously very, very different this time. So the second thing, uh, health versus wealth, wealth versus economics. That's one of the kind of the key debate points of this, this documentary. Um, this idea that um, uh, in the local government, the Tyrolean government, put... Um, mass money making uh, you know within the tourism over the health of people now uh it, it kind of tries to make out that this is a a trend across europe's tourism sector and what i would say to that is that without uh, you th there are places whereby it's only popular for tourists at certain times of the year you know you don't you don't necessarily go over to Ibiza in December but you might go to Ishkul you know you're not really unless you're like an avid mountain hiker you're not going to go to Ishkul in June time but if you're a party animal you might go to Ibiza and obviously because you know you've got the sun the beaches and all the all the things that go with that so in the short time that people have the businesses have got to make money and if you don't make money if you don't bring in income not only does your business not survive but then you can't live so i don't buy into this it's a trade-off between one against the other they go hand in hand that is life and i think a lot of the journalists particularly during this the, the whole covid era have kind of forgotten that because they've had a job 
you know that they've had a job this entire time and they've sort of sat there and told you guys all the things of what you should do but it's not affected them in the same way it has someone who might run you know might run a little uh, a mountain restaurant or might have an airbnb somewhere in the uk for example you know they, they these are the type of people who have been really here and you know I, I've seen another video on the Ishgal issue that's tried to talk about we need to be striving to more sustainable way of living for that. Well, then how how uh, put that idea across? Because I don't really see how uh, how you're going to do it really in in the way that they're suggesting. Now, Apre is obviously going to change. It, it will change for for quite a few years. Um, whether that's a good thing or not we will we will have to see um you know uh final thing is vaccine passports they're going to happen whether we like them or not um because everything that a lot of countries have, have put hinged their bets on in solving this covid crisis has been about the vaccine so for them to not introduce a system that just allows people who haven't had the vaccine, which might mean they have a greater risk of catching it or spreading it in place, would just be irresponsible and would leave them open to further lawsuits or claims should people lose their lives. So whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. And I, I just think, you know, at the end of the day, like you go to certain places, say in Africa, and although you don't le legally have to, you're pretty well recommended to get this jab and that jab for, for wherever you go. And if you go overseas for uh, like work or travel certain places, you have to get a visa. So when you really delve into it, it's not a massive infringement on liberties. And at the end of the day, if, if it gets me traveling, if it gets me back to be able to go and do the things that I want to do, that I enjoy doing before all of COVID, and that's whatever you, same applies to you guys, then so be it. I'm fine. So that's my piece on that, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think... Um, uh, what are your thoughts on Ishgul? Do you think it was a super spreader resort? Was it the government's fault, you know, or was it people within the resort? Uh, what do you think things will be like next year? Don't forget to subscribe. Catch you guys next time.